Okay, welcome everybody. This is Lon Hosford, which uh, the folks that have already been here, we've been talking a little bit. And basically, people have been asking me quite a bit about WordPress and can I use it? Should I use it? I know people are using it. So I decided to put together a couple of presentations just to show you my use of it because I actually use it and also uh, to get into some of the options. So what we're going to do in this hour and you know, maybe a little bit more is um, we'll just uh, look at the overall WordPress environment. You know, what is out there? How do we use it? The community, what technology just to get an understanding of what is involved. Uh, some of the look at different ways to actually host your WordPress uh, websites and some of the alternatives to WordPress. So you're just not myoptically looking at it only. Uh, I'll review some of the installation issues. We'll start looking at the features and the capability and some of the lingo, the buzzwords that they use inside of it. And I'm, hopefully we'll get some time to open up the administrative panels and see how, see how they look. So that's uh, where we're going to get started. So let me bring us over to a good place where we can see things that are going on. Okay, so the first thing to understand that there is WordPress.org and WordPress.com. And they define two different ways of going about WordPress. WordPress.org is the project website, and they provide the free open source software that you can download and install on your, on your hosting software. So that's what that's all about. And you can actually be involved with the whole community an ecosystem, business ecosystem that's around it, uh, creating, uh, and this is some of the lingo, uh, plugins and widgets and themes, and you can provide them for free or you can provide them at a charge. And so that's what this whole WordPress.org is about. Everywhere from the development effort to those people that want to have the software. And the software itself is open source, as I said, so that means you can get right into the code. It's written in PHP, which is a server programming language, and it uses the MySQL database. So that's really the technology right there. Other than HTML and CSS, which is all part of it, but it's basically those are the server technologies that are running. So it requires a Linux server, Apache server, and that's what most of your hosting companies have out there that you would probably get involved with. And so that you can actually get into the code and see how they did things. So if you're actually trying to learn PHP, maybe on an intermediate to a high level, you can see how these developers solve certain technical problems that they have as features in the actual software. It's a good place to, to get some chops in, in programming. And the other hand is you don't need to know anything about the PHP, just you've got to kind of know that those are the two technical pieces of software that's involved. And it's also set up so that you can set it up for multiple WordPresses. So they have a multi-blogging feature. So blogging is how WordPress got started back in 2003 or 2004 as a, as a blogging technology. And blogging has kind of come and gone as the hot button. Like everybody wanted to learn about blogging and they wanted to be bloggers. And now we're more into the e-commerce side of the internet and blogging's a part of it. So this was the original blogging software that was out there, and it was really set up for blogging. And uh, there is nwest.com, and these are the, the same people are involved, but WordPress.com is a hosting service. So it becomes WordPress software as a service. That's so the SOS term you might see. So here you can actually get yourself a WordPress account, and they do all the hosting management issues. You're actually limited to the specific things that they provide for you. So if you host it yourself, which would be starting from here, then you can customize it and add anything that's in the eco community that's out there. You have unlimited possibilities. And traditionally, that's where people went because in the WordPress.com area, it was very limited to what you could or could not do. So they've expanded that, and I've actually learned something in getting ready for this and how much further they've come, gone along. Now, they're not the only places that you... Now, what you can do with these is you can create a website, 
or a blogging site or a website with blogs in them. So that's what they will do for you. So it doesn't have to be blogging anymore. The default comes up as a blogging interface, but it's easy with a checkbox to turn it over to a, a website type of orientation with menus on it. Let's see. Uh, you have other alternatives. Uh, a very popular one would be squarespace.com. Might as well type it. So squarespace.com actually just went in with a new revision was just released here. And, and so this is very popular too. And it's like WordPress in the sense that you can They'll do all the management. You have a control panel you can go into and you have choices as to what you cannot do. And rather than being at open source, provide an API to developers to customize it. So it's just a really the only difference. They control the internal for themselves. And you can, you have to actually use the software as a service. It's like Facebook. You can Facebook has its own API to it. And so does YouTube. But the actual code that's running YouTube or Facebook is not open to the public. It's just the API lets you get in and, and use it. So, that's, so Squarespace is very popular. My daughter actually uses Squarespace because her nephew was in, into this web design world and he recommended it and got her started in it. And I've been into the panels and it's got the same concept involved. And there are there are many others. We don't uh, uh, try to do that. Uh, we mentioned before the seminar started as we were talking that we could actually do a seminar on shooting something. Weebly is another one that's out there, and we have micro blogging sites. Just want to do blogging. A lot of people will use Blogger. And that's a Google. Well, I'm not signed in on this particular one, but um, it thinks I, I'm going to sign in, but I'm not going to do it. So I don't have the password at my hand. But again, it's a hosted environment that's involved. So. So I picked one web of many out here that just tries to get into the difference between hosting it yourself and hosting it on web, uh, WordPress.com. And so what I'm going to do is take you over to two I already have running, one on each uh, type of way of going. So let me just bring you over to those. So this is lonhoster.wordpress.com, brand new as of today, created today on their site. So this is what it looks like uh, when I'm logged in to my account, uh, wordpress.com. And you saw what it looked like when I wasn't logged in. I'll just take you back over there. I know it gets a little jumpy, but this is wordpress.com, but I'm not logged in on this particular web browser. It's just a different web browser. So once you're logged in, things change a little bit, and you're kind of in a, a community that is part of this. By I think if I uh, go here, it brings me to the top of WordPress.com. And it's differently laid out because we have a community. We have all the freshly pressed WordPress websites that are out there that have just came on the market today. I don't think mine's listed here. They probably don't like it because it's not too fancy, but it may be in here. Who knows? I know I just published it. And so it's a community. So you can actually see for blogs and websites that are out here. So that's basically what WordPress.com provides on a more general basis. And since I'm logged in, I can actually go into my accounts and start posting. For example, I go to my blog here and then create an additional blog. The first thing you might want to notice is that there is a pricing arrangement here. I can find my way in. I'm a little bit clumsy because I don't use this every day. I'm not back in. They didn't want to go there. Uh, one thing I did notice that they're trying to give the administrative panels that have been traditionally reserved for the people that host their own WordPress. And I think they have a little bit of a, a UI confusion. At least I'm getting confused because I go back and forth between a user-friendly menu arrangement into the 
administrative panels, and uh, I haven't been able to get really used to that. But let's try this again here. Setting. Okay, so now you get to see my password and all my secret information. It's not going to do that. Readers, that's it. So I'm going to go to the other one. This will show what I wanted to show you. Like over here and choose sign up. Yeah, that does the job I needed to do. It could be a little bit of refreshing of your screens. So I re resize the web browser. So if you sign up, you can get a free account. And there you can see the detail. And then they have a premium account, and then they have a business account. And so they handle all the menus, everything for you. There's just nothing to do with databases or a control panel for a hosting website. You do everything through screens that are in your web browser. Now, the WordPress free leaves you with the inability to actually have a domain hosted. So that means you can have mycooldomain.com running through wordpress.com. The other ones provide that feature. And the business version provides e-commerce. So the whatever e-commerce that they have of the other two is limited. So that's basically the, the idea there. So you have to pay to, to go to your own domain, and then they have a way of making your domain show up there. Same thing with the Squarespace. Works the same way. Squarespace has the ability to put your domain into their account. So it's basically the same thing. They're just doing things that you normally would do. Uh, this is just basically a customized hosting company, if you really want to think about it, that only runs WordPress uh, as part of their hosting service. And they've got their whole interface geared around you just having to sign in. And so that's, that's basically the the difference.